Tyranny and dictatorship are definitely on the rise, but is it this new corporate globalist neoliberalist nightmare that is technologically controlling us, or is it adorable populists like Donald Trump with his new set of weird baseball cards? <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on our voyage to truth and freedom and what a voyage it is. Plainly, we're living in some kind of dictatorship where you can't rely on the deep state agencies such as the FBI and CIA when it comes to legal matters, when you can't rely on health bodies like the NIH or the CDC when it comes to health-related issues, when you can't trust Big Pharma when it comes to medical issues, you can't trust the legacy media, you can't trust the state. Is it any wonder that demagogues and populists rise up, people that are charismatic rise up and capture the imagination imagination of a population and rightly or wrongly garner incredible support. The most obvious global example being Donald Trump, who the legacy media are spending a lot of time telling you will be a massive dictator if he ever gets into power again. Exiling, executing, imprisoning, even though Donald Trump's already been in power before and I don't think it was all that different, except there are perhaps a few less wars. Let's have a look at the legacy media's hysteria when it comes to a 2024 term and note how they never mention what we could do is become more electable ourselves. We we could create an establishment worthy of the people's trust that wouldn't lead to the rise of populism and reactionary political movements by having reliable institutions that weren't so corrupt, deceptive, tyrannical and contemptuous of the population that figures that were broadly populist wouldn't get the traction they get. Let's have a look at the legacy media lying to us as always. What would a second Donald Trump term look like? A bit like the first one? Well, he cannot be the next president. Um, it, it, because if he is... You can't imagine the things that he's going to do. Can't even imagine them. What, even if you're a Latin American surrealist writer? No, you can't imagine it. We'll all wake up in our beds. We'll have turned into insects overnight. We're already living in a Kafkaesque bureaucratic nightmare where we don't know what the truth is and we can't trust one another and we live in cynicism and suspicion. What could possibly be any worse? Mexico, Canada. We can't go to Canada. I'm not going to take Canada. Because eventually Canada will become annexed to America. What is the evidence? And also, what's been going on in Canada? If you are a Canadian, imagine that. Donald Trump coming there. Then you wouldn't be able to celebrate actual Nazis in your parliament with a round of applause. Because that did actually happen. <laughs> and shoot visitors to the White House. Yeah, that means he can shoot the First Lady. He's not a shoot his own wife, he could do that any time. Who does he mean, Milena, who he plainly adores, or Jill Biden? We're gonna see violence, the likes of which we didn't even see on January 6th. Make it illegal to run against him, to throw his opponents in jail, to shut down the media. Is it odd that during this, Donald Trump is facing a series of indictments that are curiously making him ever more popular because people don't trust the legacy media and don't trust the establishment. And the reason they don't trust them is because of hysteria like this. He will make himself into the Fuhrer and he will make everybody raise their hand and salute him. He will make us all raise our hands using electric shocks and Pinocchio-like puppet strings. He will advance himself into the future and shout into your face at you from the future when you're older and you can't think straight. Using martial law against the American people. Terminate the Constitution. To rewrite the Constitution. Create mass internment camps. Internment camps were set up incredibly profligately during the pandemic era, if I recall, in Australia, for example. Throw everyone into Gitmo. Might be sent to jail or their rights might be suppressed. You might have any number of things happen to you and your family. Any number. 33, 9. None? Every one of us, our freedom, our liberty, none of us is safe. He's going to have people around him executing against an enemy's list. Assassinate generals. <laughs> I didn't assassinate generals. Martin Gurry wrote an incredible article where he said, in history, there has never been a dictator that wasn't in their 30s or 40s. There's never been a dictator that didn't have control of a militia or wasn't the head of a division of an army. Because in order to overthrow a constitutional democracy, you have to have an armed militia. It's not enough to have like a couple of people in MAGA hats waving flags. Or, What's he going to do? Get the QAnon shaman to kill those generals? What's he going to kill them with? Dream catchers. Order troops uh, to um, attack American citizens. Trump's very well-armed and extremist base will try to kill people. He's going to basically burn the house down. That's the trying to evoke the idea of the Reichstag. They've spent incredible emotional energy and airtime trying to convince us that Donald Trump is like an old-school dictator, but it is an inept, corrupt, and hollow argument because the type of dictatorship that we are moving towards is a bureaucratic, technological dictatorship where social credit scores will be used to inhibit and prohibit 
prohibit your movement, where you could be instantly debanked or unpersoned, where you're under constant surveillance, where censorship is completely immersive, and where you might be denied access to medical treatment if you're a persona non grata. In a sense, this is a classic bait and switch. Donald Trump is a vivid, lurid, potent political figure, a populist who reached unprecedented levels of success, surprised an entire establishment that bloody well needed a surprise, more than a surprise, needed a revolution. He is not the problem, he's a symptom of the problem, and currently he's serving as a distraction. Let me know if you agree with that analysis in the chat. He will unravel the institutions of our democracy. Draw similarities between Mussolini and Hitler. Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini. Makes Donald Trump even more dangerous. He's a lot like Pol Pot, isn't he, with the killing fields? That's Mar-a-Lago. Or he's maybe like Stalin, but maybe the hair. No, they're really sort of clutching at ways to compare him to dictators, when in fact, really what he is, is a populist, entertainment age, post-modern political figure. Wants to take away your vote. Senate and the House are immediately going to be paralyzed. People will begin in their minds to censor themselves. They... That's happening. You've been told to do that continually. Who among us feels free to communicate or feel safe in the world at the moment? The legacy media establishment wants you in a perpetual state of fear about everything that you're thinking and saying and believing. We've just emerged from a pandemic that in mass hysteria, mass neurosis, and an inability to report the mildest of adverse events. They might say, well, maybe I shouldn't say this. This is the end of democracy. Yeah. I think that could be the end of our democracy. But democracy is dead if Trump is re-elected. Maybe democracy dies when you have a president that won't debate opponents within his own party. When you have primaries literally cancelled because Joe Biden doesn't want to face, a, in, for example, the Floridian party. When you have independent candidates continually smeared, an electorate that's told that if you don't vote for Joe Biden, you're voting for a dictatorship, even if you were actually voting for Cornell West. Yeah, but Cornell West, that'll mean Trump will win. So essentially, you, you are the fascist. But I like Cornell West. Yeah, that's part of the problem. That's how they get you. Goes up to Putin that democracy will be at risk. The absolute destruction of the Justice Department as we know it. The Justice Department could be entirely transformed. I am really concerned about that. Every person who was associated with the attempted coup elevated in the administration. No, not the QAnon shaman and the rule of law. Arrest political opponents. To persecute, not prosecute, but persecute his enemies. The prosecute's bad enough, but persecute? He'll do that. Based on what? Well, these are just some things, I think. Take a wrecking ball to the rule of law. He's going to make the law. Everyone else will have to follow. A vote for Donald Trump. Uh, may mean the last election that you ever get to vote in. That's a person whose actual father participated in the weapons of mass destruction lie, the unnecessary invasion of Iraq, and the exploitation of the American population that was engendered then continues to this day because they've just prolonged Section 702 that allows unfettered surveillance of American citizens. It is the dictatorship that is already in place that's the issue, not a hypothetical one. To go after the independent and free parts of American civic life. He would tear down our institutions. Purge the government of employees. Department by department effort to weaponize the powers of the government. To use the military to quash protests. Ridding the government of all democratic safeguards. Junking American democracy as we have always known it. That he would try to stay in office beyond a second term. That he would never leave office. There's no question. No question. You don't even need to ask that question. Why did you ask it? Trump is reelected. He won't leave. Donald Trump will never leave office voluntarily. And what that means is that everybody who wants us to remain a republic has to put every other thing aside. Let me level you. I don't think Donald Trump is the solution to the problems that American and global democracy are facing. But certainly it's pretty plain that the establishment do not want him being elected. I've never seen such incredible effort spent discrediting a figure and amplifying dangers that their own constitution should prevent and a total inability to face the consequences of the ineptitude of the candidate, party and neoliberal establishment that they vehemently support and never scrutinise or analyse. They're perpetuating the problems that led to the rise of Trump even while decrying him. Him, perpetuating the cycle that led to him in the first place. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the chat? Remember, we'll be streaming every day from these times, from this date. In the meantime, if you can, stay free. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.